Welcome to the Donkey Dojo. My name is Trevor Smith, and today is week seven of our All Star Foundation series. I'm real excited about this one. If you guys think that there's something different about what I'm filming today, it's because there are some slight changes to where I've put the cameras in the room. I'm in the middle of filming handling foundations for dog agility, and that series will be coming out on Doggy Dojo real soon. So make sure to hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos coming out here on the channel. Our first game today, if you look here, we have what looks like a mess. It's, it is a little bit of a disorganized mess, but there's a purpose behind it. Today, we once again have Mochi here to show you guys the training games, but also my wonderful daughter as well. Out here, we have a little obstacle course that may change to my daughter's discretion as we go along here. But this is something fun you could do to increase your walking skills with your dog. Most of the time we walk with our dog and we're trying to train our dog to walk with us. Mochi, we walk from point A to point B. So we're walking, here, watch you And we're going from one place to another place. And if your dog catches on, which some of your dogs probably have done, is they'll catch on to knowing that, hey, we're walking to the park. Hey, we're walking from the park back home. What's gonna happen so often is your dog will pull you from point A to point B, or they like to call point A to point Z. But there's a whole alphabet between your home and the park and the park and your home. So as you go along your walk, I suggest you do little training breaks or little training pauses throughout your walk. At the corner, stop, train your dog a little bit. If you see a driveway, stop and see if you can stop your dog right on the line before you go into the driveway. Really important, particularly if you're going from the sidewalk into the street to cross to the other side in the neighborhood. Make sure your dog stops at those curbs every single time so if your dog happens to be off leash or if they're ever running loose in a neighborhood, you need to make sure that your dog, if it sees a curb, it doesn't just go right into the road. It stops and checks for a second. That will give cars that are flying by a chance to see your dog before they keep on going. So how are we gonna practice that here inside my studio is we also are gonna use our canine fitness skills that we've been training. And I set out a lot of canine fitness little pieces of equipment. Some of them are specifically made for canines, some of them are specifically made for children, and some of them are specifically made for adults. So there's a variety of things out here that we're gonna do little pauses or training breaks at. So we're gonna start Mochi off right here on this pad here, and we're gonna move on to across different pads. Now I can maybe skip a few, because there's a lot close together, and just do a variety. Boom, let's go. Here we go. Now you can put your dog on leash to do this exercise, make things faster, or just get them used to being on a leash. And we're gonna stop at different points or different places while we're training our dog. That's a really chewy treat, isn't it? Let's go. We'll probably start at this, stop at this green one next with a little front paw placement. Oops, he didn't see it. It's okay. He's focused on the cookie that was in front of him. Yeah, good. And reward that behavior. Right here we may go all the way and do a little rear paw placement. Good job. So this is kind of like a nice training review of the, a lot of the games we've been playing in class on this series. Stop here on this little wobbly pad. Good job. Here, break. Stop here on this training pad. Now this time, what I might actually even do in this type of training environment is work on my stays for a little bit. He's on the pad. I can tell him stay, walk a couple steps away, come back and reward. Good boy. And we can just work through this. So if you have like a little training table like this at home, that's what you can do as well. You don't have to go in a box square. You don't have to go always to the one direction. You might just go counterclockwise as well. Let's go, break. We'll go up to here, mochi. And I now have them on my right, but you might choose to always walk your dog on one side or the other. It just depends on what you're working on. On dog agility, I need him to train with me both on the left and the right hand side. So I'm gonna work on both in left right hand sides. But for some dogs that gets confusing, it gets them to windshield wiper between the left and right hand side. Good job. This one here is all four paws right here. Yeah, good boy. And while he's on this nice flat platform, I ask for a sit at side, sit. Good job, or stand at side, stand. Or down. Jump down. The downs at side have always been a little bit harder for him. And I've never really done a lot of them on the right hand side though, even on a platform like this. So one of the things I can look as a training gear is it, okay, is it because he's at my side or is he nervous about this platform here? And I'm thinking he's a little bit nervous about the platform here. It doesn't have the best traction on the world on top. 
Good job, buddy. So we're gonna work through that issue real quickly. I'm gonna move to the front, make the one less one step less difficult. Good job. Yes, good boy. Very nice. Good job. Super. And I could do a little downstay duration here. Break free. I'll tell him free before he slips off of it. That's good. And good job. And you know, we can always come over here. Mochi. To this one. You can always work on a little orbit exercise going around the bowl here. So lots of different things we can do. And I suggest to you that's how you mix it up. We've learned a lot of these games individually in our training course here. And now we can bring them all together with this fun little doggy ninja warrior course is what we like to call it. So that the dog learns how to do all of our behaviors in different types of contexts. And it makes training more fun. If you're doing this you know, on a walk, of course you're not gonna have all these obstacles around you. But what you can do is you can get your dog to stop on a wooden log or a low platform or a rock or different things in your environment to make it a bit more fun. Because that's the key, right? When you're walking your dog, if it's boring, if you're just like on your phone as you're walking there, look at this good boy right here. I'm gonna give him reinforcement for this. He's just laying down, voluntarily laying down this because he knew I liked that exercise. So I'm gonna give him reinforcement for that. But even on your walks, what's gonna happen a lot of times, if you're on your phone and you're ignoring your dog, as you go on a walk and then they go and they pull towards a squirrel or smell or something like that, that's all entertainment for them, right? They're trying to engage the environment because you're not engaging them. So they're gonna tendency to get their reinforcement away from you and the pulling of leash will increase. But the tendency of reinforcement is with you and going with you and doing things with you, the loose leash will start to increase and the tight leash will start to decrease. So that's my suggestion to you to kind of increase your walking game when it comes to inside the house, outside of the house, and in public in general. So some of you guys might be experiencing some major pulling on the leash problems. Let's tackle that right now with this next game. What you're gonna need is your dog's leash, of course, and the bowls we've been using. You can use any dog bowl. You don't have to use this one specifically. So you're gonna put the bowl on the ground and then you're gonna put the leash on your dog. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some delicious dog food into the bowl in here a second. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to reward my dog at my side. So I'm going to bring him over here, give him some treats. So he knows where he gets reinforcement. And then I'm going to put some cookies and treats inside of this bowl. That's going to make him pull towards the bowl on the ground. Now see that there's a little tension in the leash here. What we're going to do is we're going to wait out that tension in the leash. She's thinking, I want that food in that bowl. There's some delicious big old cookies inside that food bowl right now. Yes! As soon as I see a loose leash, we're going to say yes, and we're going to bring him all the way back and give him reinforcement at our side again. Isn't that good? He's going to experiment with that real quickly. He got a cookie. He's going to figure out why he got a cookie. So he's going to put more tension sometimes in the leash to think, well, was it the pulling of the leash? that got me that cookie. But what we're gonna find out here pretty soon is that it's actually, yes, the loosening of the leash that gets him the cookie. So I'll pause a little bit longer on that loose leash and then what I'm gonna do to combat that theory of pulling on a leash, I'm gonna give him a second reinforcer for staying on a loose leash. And a third reinforcement. And a fifth or fourth <laughs> reinforcement, I should count. I'm just gonna keep reinforcing that behavior. He's going to be a smart dog. He's going to think, was well, a point leash. I'm really not feeling as much tension and the loose leash is coming a bit faster. I'm going to loosen it up for him, see what he does. Yes, he's backing up towards me. Exactly what I want. Now where I can make this a little harder since he's doing a pretty darn good job and he's not getting a lot of pulling reinforcement is right now I'm stationary. I'm stationary, the food is away from me. He comes back and gets reinforcement. Now, if we play this game where we're walking by it, it gets a little bit more difficult. So I'm gonna come over here. Good job, ready? Good job, buddy. Let's go. Good job, there's a pull leash there. He knows it's there. Most dogs can't do this as quickly as he's doing it right now. He's doing a pretty good job. That comes with a lot of our off-leash games we're doing. Oh, there is cookies there. He figured out there's cookies there. I think he forgot about them. So now that we move by them, Let's see what he does. I'm moving forward just a little bit to give him a different point. Yes, good, he gave me eye contact. I'm re reinforcing that behavior. We're gonna go by it again. If you wanna make it easier on yourself, what you can do is walk, put yourself between him and the bowl, and that kind of blocks them from getting to the food bowl as easily, unless they go behind your back, which some dogs will do. 
And then the harder phase is what I was doing earlier is just to walk by it like this. Yes, good. And reinforce them not pulling towards the reinforcement. He's thinking about it, he's stationary. Now some of you guys might have this problem here too where the dog is stopping and sniffing a smell. So you can actually start right here now introducing a let's go reward. That way the dog hears the word let's go. That means to let's go with me. Some people say with me, mush, <laughs> whatever word you want to use to get the dog moving next to you. As he stays in reinforcement here, he keeps getting reinforcement. Good job. Of course, following you and not pulling a leash is good for everyday life, but also them following you and not going towards reinforcement, whether that be a dog, a squirrel, off course tunnel and dog agility, or going and jumping into the water before you tell them to at dock diving, all that's real important. A lot of impulse control games we've played in this series, I think that's probably what's helped him to be successful in that particular game. So if your dog is really struggling with this game, I suggest going back to a few videos and looking at all the other different videos we have on impulse control games. We talked about here yoga mat not necessarily being an easy thing for him to put rear paw targeting on because it's a rubber floor, this is kind of a rubber material. So I used something a little bit taller previously to this, but um, with the backup training, I can also see this being an advantage that it's lower, it's not as hard to step up on. I'm gonna back him up towards it. Oh, you thinking, what do you want me, what do you want me to do? I'm gonna tell him to search. We'll go back. We're gonna start off where we left off last time before, which is a little search cookie, and as they come up to it and their back paws hit this, yes. Say yes and mark a reward. Go forward a little bit. Come on, Mochi. Back it up a little bit. Yes, reward. Go forward a little bit. Back it up a little bit. Yes, reward. Go forward a little bit. Back it up a little bit. Yes, reward. And then you can go a little further with your dog. Forward a little bit and back it up. Yes, reward. Good job. And that other surface behind them gets them to know to keep backing up. Yes till they hit the other surface. Now, some dogs, it really is difficult for them to know to back up. So I have a couple other tips for you. And this is a great way to get your dog to learn to back up using two barriers. And you don't have to have two climbs. You can use a chair and a wall. You can use chairs on both sides. It just depends on your dog. So actually something I found out earlier is that we were playing with a toy between a couch and an ottoman, and when I threw the toy behind him, he's also doing a backup trick as well. That one he kind of curved because he's a very flexible puppy. The couch or ottoman was very thin though, so it made it harder to get him. Yes, good job. Very good, ready? Search. Good job. And what I can start to do, as the dog gets better about this, is I can start to say, back up, search. Good job, good. Excellent. An advantage to a wall is you have a lot more real estate to kind of move forward with. Ready? Search. Yeah, so this is another way of teaching back up as well. Back up. Yes, good job. It's all great for canine conditioning, proprioception, getting the dog used to different ways of using their body and moving around. And for tricks, of course, learning to back up is, is essential trick for orbit to just back up in general, backing up leg weave. So this is just different ways to get your dog to learn how to back up and learn where their paws are behind them. Before we jump into this last game with this basket of mystery items, I wanna make sure that you guys don't miss a single video. So hit subscribe and go ahead and hit that notification bell. If you like this video, I'd love to see you put a on that like button, but also if you have any comments, comment them down below. So let's get started on this next game. So as always, we talk about different types of reinforcement games with our dogs on this training series. One of the things you can do is get a basket full of toys. And if your dog is struggling and you don't know what your dog likes to play with, this is a great way of playing with them and figuring that out. Speaking of which, toys. Now some of my daughter's toys I think are inter interspersed into here and some other items I wasn't expecting. She saw me packing this full of toys and I was like, I'll add some of my toys too. So we'll have to navigate around that as we go here. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the basket of toys and you're just going to dump them. Woohoo! Good job. And you're gonna see what he wants to play with. Anything and everything is something he can play with. As long as it's toy related and dog toy related at that. I'd suggest making sure that it's all dog toys and seeing what they wanna play with. 
He's looking pretty interested in this, so I might start playing with this. And good boy, awesome. So he's also like, hey, um, these are some of my toys. <laughs> good job. Ready, go. She just thought I was needing to put toys in the bag. Yeah, good boy. And just engage them and play with them and see what they like. See if there's anything else that they may want to play with as well. See what they gravitate to. First, dump the toy them. That is important to make sure to see what they are out of all this variety of toys, balls, tug toys, squeaky toys, what is he most interested in? And one of the things he's most interested in is this little Nyla bone stick. Get it, good job. That can also be a toy. For him it is, good job. Some dogs, it's just straight shoes. You got toys too, you ready? Good job. And see also that we can go back to one of our previous games too, is do the switcheroo game. See if you can get them playing with other types of toys as well. And seeing which of the multitude of toys are his top three when you're playing and engaging with your dog with these toys. Now, some of your dogs may just poke and sniff a few, but you're going to find them gravitate to a certain type of toy. And it's really, really important for you to know which toy your dog prefers the most. Hard, bony type things. Yeah. Good job. Super. Things he can really hold well in his mouth and play tug with. I'm noticing. See what he does with that one. See if he goes back to it or if he keeps that one in his mouth. That's see, that's information. Him knowing like if I throw this toy, this tennis ball, what's he gonna do about the tennis ball? Is he gonna grab it and bring it back or is he gonna hold this other toy instead? He's actually interested in the tennis ball. Good boy! Nice! So he gave up that other toy for a tennis ball. I'm not sure if he has much value with tennis balls, but he's showing me that, hey, maybe I might be interested in it. That's kind of fun. Good job, very good. So for him, he has a lot of interest in all types of toys. So the point of this game is to figure out what toys or what items your dogs are most interested in. Do they like balls? Do they like squeaky toys? Do they like fuzzy toys? What is your dog's favorite type of toy? And play this game multiple times. You know, you can play it daily, you can play it three times a week, and just make a track record of what toys they tend to gravitate to. It's important to know what reinforcers your dogs love the most. Now that we've played with a variety of reinforcers, pet, praise, treats, toys, it's important to have an idea of what ranks in those each categories. Does your dog love cheese the most? Does your dog love these dried treats? And I noticed that today there is some difficulty with him. We've used these particular freeze dried treats a lot in his training. And today I had to mix it up a little bit. And you'll find that too with your dog, that after a few weeks of using the same treat all the time, your dogs will just get bored and they're not gonna to wanna to engage. You just switch up the treat or toy and they start to re-engage again. Us as humans, we don't like to always eat the same thing. We like variety. We like certain things more than others, but like if I love strawberry cheesecake and that's great and I have that for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, after about a week, I think I might start getting bored of strawberry cheesecake and want something else as well. When it comes to toys, does your dog like to tug with you? Does they like to fetch with you? Do they like to just tear something up? What is your dog's big game? And what is your dog's big treat? And what is your dog's big pet area? So that way your dog can be rewarded for big behavior. If your dog is struggling or if your dog is learning something new and they finally get the correct answer, it's important to know these things as you might want to swoop in with a big reward for your dog. And that way it solidifies that training response or solidifies that training behavior in your dog's mind. Thanks for watching here on the Doggy Dojo. I had so much fun training these games with you. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below. As always, have some fun with your dogs and we'll see y'all next time. Bye.